Welcome back. You're about to start working on your final project for this course. Before you begin, you need to learn a little bit more about File.io, or File Input and Output. This video will show you the basics of how to read from a file in a Python program. When the user's question is input, the chatbot looks for keywords in the message and compares those keywords with the predetermined answers. If there is a match, the chatbot will respond with a pre-identified response. In this case, it scanned the request and found two phrases that are particularly important. The algorithm has been programmed to determine the urgency of a specific request and respond based on the level of urgency. In this case, the phrase help ASAP has been given a score of 95%, meaning that it's a very urgent matter. When messages are this urgent, the chatbot has been programmed to reach out to customer support. IO, or input output, is a general term in programming that refers to the flow of information into and out of a program. You've done a great deal of IO already. The input function allows you to retrieve input from the person running your program, and the print statement allows you to output information to their console. It's also possible to retrieve information from a file rather than from a user. Unlike a user, with a file, you don't have to wait for anything to be typed. We can just read the lines of text that are already present. Let's say for the time being that we have a file called foods.txt. It contains four lines of text. The first line has different types of fruits, the second has different types of veggies, and so forth. If we want to read from this file, the first thing we need to do is create a file object and store it in a variable. We can use the open function to do this. The function takes a single argument, the name of the file is a string, and returns it as a file object. In this example, we store the file object in a variable called file. Once we have the file variable, we can actually write a for loop over it as though it were a list. In this example, you can think of the variable file as a list of strings, where each string is a line in the file. Watch what happens when we print each line in the file. Notice the blank line between each line of output in our console. This happens because each string that we retrieve from the file actually has an invisible character at the end that tells Python to go to the next line in the console. This character is called the newline character. The print statement adds a newline character to everything it prints. This is how everything you print appears on its own line. You can always use the strip method to remove the trailing newline character from the string you read from the file. This way, in each print statement, the only newline character will be the one the print statement adds. If you're going to use the variable line later, it might be a good idea to just replace it with a version of itself that doesn't have a trailing new line. Once you've extracted a line of text from a file, you can treat it just like any other string. For example, you can append it to something. You can also use the split method to split it into words. This will definitely come in handy with this project. By using a combination of for loops, the strip method, and the split method, you can handle each word in the file individually. Okay, let's walk through again how to access a file in Python. On the left side panel, click the files icon to show the files that exist in this program. We have main.py, which is our Python file, and another file called myfile.txt. This will be the text file that we'll be importing into our Python program. Inside the file, you'll see there's two lines of text. We're gonna use Python to read into this file and access these two lines. Going back to main.py to write our code, let's get started. To open this file, we need to use the open function. The open function takes the string of the file name and returns a file object. Let's store the file object in a variable called file. Each line in the file can be iterated over using a loop like this. We can then treat each line of the file as a string and print each line on the file using a print statement. When we run this program, we'll see the two lines appear in the console. Let's try adding an additional line to the txt file. Okay, and when we rerun the program, you'll see three lines are printed. We can also extract individual words from a file using the open and split functions. The current code opens a file called classlist.txt, which contains one line of names separated by commas. Let's create a program that reads this file and makes a list of the names in the file. To store the names, we first need to create a list. Let's call it line list. 
Like the other example, we'll need to use a for loop to reach each line of the file. Each line of the file needs to be split wherever there is a space. To do this, we write line.split. This method will return a list, so we can replace line list with what it returns. Let's print what this looks like. This is almost what we're looking for. Some of the elements in our list still have a comma after the name. So instead, we could split the line wherever there's a comma and a space. So let's write line list is equal to line dot split. And then in the parentheses, we can write a string with the characters where we want the string to be split. So that would be where there's a comma, but also a space. Okay, and let's print this out. To create space between the two outputs, I'm also going to include a new line character. Okay, let's rerun the code to see what happens. As you can see, the second list now separates each name by the comma and space. Each element of the list no longer contains a comma and also removed any additional spaces. This is very handy, especially for our chatbot. Using the in keyword or the membership operator, we can also check if a name exists in the list now. So let's test if the name Antonio is in the class list and print the results. So outside of our for loop, we need to create a print statement with a label. So we're going to have a label just saying whether Antonio is in the class or not. So we can have a string that says the name Antonio is in the class list. And then we'll have an expression using the membership operator. So we can write Antonio in, and then the name of our list. So this is going to check whether the string on the left is in the list on the right. So basically, it's going to check whether this string Antonio is in the name list that we generated from the file. OK, let's run the code to see the results. Cool. So now it says the name Antonio is in the class list. True. So the name Antonio indeed exists in the class list. Great, now it's your turn to explore this example.